good? Welcome you guys back to my channel, Nene Blobs. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about clockwork prints in the Infernal Devices series by Cassandra Clare. That was a long sentence, you guys. Um, this is how the book looks. Um, this is going to be full of spoils. Spoilers, I mean. So if you guys haven't read the first book yet or this book, um, please first read it and then come back. If you're finished with the first book but you're not finished with the second book, you can watch my um, review slash book talk on the first book, which is Clockwork Angel, um, which will be in the description below. So please check that out and then read the second book and then come back. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna um, start with all the spoily parts. So um, see you guys next time, whoever hasn't read the book yet. And I failed. Did you see how I just stopped because my bed stopped me from turning? Okay, so the book. Okay, wait, now my excitement is like rising completely. Mm -hmm. I'll start with Will and Will's curse. So the first book ends with Will going to Magnus and saying, I need your help. The book starts with him and then we find out he's, he's cursed. He, when he was younger, his parents, they quit the life of shadow hunting or something, but his father had this pixis, pixer thing with a demon inside and he's like, oh, do not open it. Oh, do not open that? Okay, I will. So obviously you can't just leave something and tell the child not to do something. So Will decides to open it and this blue demon comes out and says whoever, whoever loves you or whoever will love you will die if not right there um, will die in the in matter of minutes hours or even years you won't know but they will die because they love you and to top it all off his sister dies after saving him so obviously will believes um, the blue thingamajiggy demon and now he leaves his family. That's why he's that type of person that's so mean, so like selfish and obnoxious and he's trying on purpose for others not to like him. And Jem is his only sin, which I felt like... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Jem and Will are parabatized, but I don't know how to exp um, pronounce it, but they are that and um, in this book you also find out more about them, like if they put the runes on each other, more strength comes out of it and the oath is more very like important and yeah, so anyway, Will goes to Magnus and they're trying to get this blue demon and then after going to the ball, seeing the demon, the demon bites him and leaves a tooth in his body. So Will takes it to Magnus and then Magnus gets the demon and Will can speak to the demon and then the demon's like, oh, the curse was never actually a curse. Because I was too weak to actually put a curse on you so I just pretended. What actually killed your sister was my poison or something. And I'm like... No. No ways. How many of you guys got annoyed by that? Why did he do that? Will had to live these like five years trying to make himself a bad person so that other people don't love him, to live alone, to feel so bad about himself. For it all just to be not even a real curse. But when that happened, I was like, go get Tessa. She, he, oh my gosh, go get Tessa right now. And oh, it's so annoying. So then, we get Tessa's perspective and there's a knock on her door and then I'm like, no, please be Will and then it's not Will. It's Jem. Oh, and obviously Jem comes before Will and proposes. She's like thinking, is this true? Does he actually love her? And then he's like, yeah, I love you, I love you, I love you and stuff. And she doesn't complete, she loves him, but I don't think she loves him like that. And she's like, he's dying and she should just love him. Also, it, it also said something like, so that I can um, break the small connection I have with Will, I should marry him or marry Jem or something like that. And I'm like, no, let that small thing grow and let Will be your person. I don't know, she has to say like, I love Jem, I love Jem, I'm marrying Jem when she sees Will. And in the book, she her heart flutters when she sees Will. So I don't understand why she chose Jim. Obviously, they keep it a secret, and then Will comes and she's like, "I need to talk to you." And then they first go to that to um, 
the other place and then they come back and then Will tells her and then she's like I can't and I'm like no and it's true Will can't, they can't do anything about it because Jem is Will's best friend now also something else didn't Jem see that Will loved Tessa and then Will see that Jem loves Tessa like how did they hide it from each other? If they're so close, how can't they see what's right in front of them? I think Jim is a really good guy. I feel like he's super kind. He always helps Tessa. But I feel... Uh, I feel like he's a good friend. <laughs> and when it happened in the book, I was quite surprised when he... Like, I knew he loved her. But when they start kissing and, like, making out, I was just like, what? This is weird for me because I felt like... Nah, this is not that. Uh, Tessa, don't do that. That's something new. But I was, I was still not wanting that. I wanted her and Will. And oh yeah, let's just talk about the ball. So we first hear about Jasmine uh, and her things at night. When in Sophie's perspective, so Sophie sees her walking and she's in a boy's outfit. And then later on. She finds a letter and it's an invitation to a ball at the Benedict from Nate. And it's Nate's handwriting. And then Sophie does that tangled move and gets a... Wait, wait why did she get a mirror? But entangled it's pa a pan, but it's the same thing. So she gets the mirror and knocks her over the head and changes her to her own bed. You go, girl! And um, Tessa has to dress up like her. And they go to the ball and they see stuff. But anyway, and then at the end, Will and Tessa make out. And I'm like, yay! I was like the happiest person. I was like, yes, 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 yes. Who else was happy there? I was really happy. But then Magnus comes and is like, oh, there you guys are. And you, oh, I was so angry with him for stopping the moment. But anyway, um, yeah. So the beginning of the book is all about... Um, they're at the clave or the court and the clave is and the council is like blaming actually Charlotte for letting Mr. Mortman go or disappear and um, letting him out of her sight and also letting Nate um, stay in her house in the institute and now Benedict he's against Charlotte and a woman um, being the leader of the institute and he's like no I want to be the institute leader so they come to a conclusion where they give Charlotte and Henry only two weeks, two weeks, to find, find um, evidence or find Mr. Mortman. If she doesn't get to that or do that, then Mr. Benedict is going to take the institute from her. <sighs> that was so annoying and I'm so happy. I was so happy when everything was like happening and um, the demon pox. Like, they were joking about it and everything, and it's actually true. And I'm like, yes! <laughs> and they had something over him, and they could blackmail him. And also, Gideon and Gabriel, they are now also training Sophie and um, Tessa. And I'm like, whoa, that is interesting, because Gabriel and Will are not a good, good, in good relationship. And also, the outcome of what actually happened with... Um, Will and Gabriel's sister was very surprising because I thought it was going to be like very bad and she, he broke her heart very badly but you know what it was? It was just she, he read her diary in front of everyone and in the, Will's perspective he was actually saving her life by being mean to her and then Gideon comes and, and is like with Soph Sophie Sophie, yeah, Sophie. And you're like, oh, that's so nice. Like, first, you don't really pay attention to that, the relationship because you think that Sophie still likes Jim. And, um, yeah. But, no, then they fall in love. And it's just like, and at the end, Gideon helps them. And Gideon goes against his father. And it's so annoying how Ga Gabriel doesn't go against his father. Because I think, though, I can't blame him completely completely because he grew up like that and he hasn't gone away from the house. Gideon has gotten a chance to see what it's really like but Gabriel hasn't so I see that. Also Charlotte and Henry. Okay, Henry 
Henry. <laughs> I feel like he's so out of it. He like literally has, he knows what's going on, but not completely. He's just very set on his mechanisms, which actually one of them worked this, this book, which, oh my gosh. Okay. I was so happy about because everyone thinks he's a failure and he, he makes things that break and then it at last helps um, them and saves them, except it does hurt while when it blows up. But also, something, quickly, 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 before I talk about Henry and Charlotte. When Jem comes up to Will and he's like, I just want to say thank you um, that you saved Tessa because you knew how much she meant to me. Oh, but Will loves her. Will actually loves her. Okay, so anyway, so Henry and Charlotte, and now this book, you find out more about their relationship. So most people think that Charlotte... Even Charlotte thinks this, that Henry's father paid Charlotte's father off a debt um, by giving Henry to Charlotte because Charlotte needed a guy to run the institute. So Charlotte feels like Henry doesn't love her and Henry just is there um, because he was paying off a debt for her father. And Henry feels like Charlotte doesn't love her, uh, Charlotte doesn't love him because she just needs a guy so that um, she can run the institute. And then, oh, I love the part where they were like, no, but I actually love you. And then she, they're like, no, I thought you didn't. And then I'm like, I do. And then it's just so nice and romantic. And then they kiss and it's just like, oh. before the ending, she's like, oh, Henry, I have to tell you something. But then she never gets the chance. I, I knew it was a baby. And at the end when they're like, I also have good news. Henry and I are expecting a baby and I was just like the happiest person <laughs> and I'm happy that they now understand each other more. <laughs> so the ending was like mixed mo emotions because I was okay I was happy for Charlotte and Henry for getting a baby. I was happy for Gideon and Sophie because obviously they were like a couple and everything and then I was unsure when Jim and um, Tessa told everyone that they were engaged. The end in when this 15 year old girl that we've seen previously in the book comes and she's like um, I'm Cecily Herondale which is Will's sister and I want to become to be trained in the Shadowhunter world and I'm like oh my gosh this book though oh Cassandra Clare has the most amazing talent of letting you be sucked in to something and get used to something and then you're just like turned over and then you get used to it again and then you turn over again. So Bridget is now the new cook and she keeps on singing stuff and it's usually like in connection with what's happening in the story. It's really funny, like the ending was the most funniest song where she's like, where they're like, okay let me quickly actually read it to you. Or saw ye the lad that I love best and his name it is Sweet William. I laughed because I was just like, that was a funny part. Because she loves him. She loves him. And then after that, she's like, okay, I'm going to kill her and she can just make a song about that. And I'm like, you, yeah. But, really, she should go for Will. Well, okay, I, you guys can see that I am so team wall. I randomly wrote stuff when I wanted to do, talk about them. So. The first thing, I have no idea what I meant about this, but at the beginning, Will and Tessa were very stubborn towards each other. That's what it's about! It's so at the beginning, when they're talking about their favorite books, and then then they both were like, oh, I, yeah, I read it, I don't like this book. And then, then they were talking about the book. It was just like really funny. And secretly, she loves the book, but she's like, no, I don't like the book and they're like, oh, so you don't like my taste and stuff like that. They were so stubborn and then late, later they read the book and it's just like, that is nice. And also one part that was so funny was when they were, they said um, that word reparation. And then Will's like, if we're going about like choosing random word, random long words, I would choose, right, genophobia, which is fear of knees. And I'm like... That's funny. Yeah, something else when they were walking, they passed the church and then um, Tessa's like, oh, that, this institute is so beautiful and everything. And then like one of the guys said, sometimes it's church is just a church, not the institute. And I'm like, 
That's so true. It's... And also, I just want to talk to you about something that I'm learning Chinese in um, our school. It's very difficult. But it was cool how he said like some words and it was really funny or oh, it was really nice when he's like when he said he said which um, which he's like oh it means your hair is um, becoming undone and then later on he says it again and he's like it actually means you are beautiful and I'm like oh, that is so nice yes okay so it was really funny when Walt comes back and then he looks so different, he's acting so like happy, like I loved that part, he was so jolly and like happy about everything and then at the end they're like, was that wool? She said finally. Henry ar arched one ginger eyebrow, perhaps he's been kidnapped and replaced by an ultimatum, he, he suggested. It seems possible, for once Charlotte could only find herself in agreement. I really love the beginnings of all the chapters. Like one of my favorite, I put on my um, my WhatsApp status even. It said, a, f "A friendship is but one mind in two bodies." We learned a lot about every character. Like now we he hear that Tessa might be the daughter of a demon father and a shadow hunter mother. But the babies usually come out stillborn, so it's not really possible that she is that. But we never know, so I think we're going to find out in the last book, obviously, what she is, which I'm excited for. And J Jasmine Mine, I don't know, is still at the silent city where, yeah, she's held the prison because she went against her family, which I'm also, I'm so annoyed with. I thought she was such a nice person, but I guess she was in love and... Love is blind, and she chose the wrong person, and it's kind of annoying. Um, hopefully she gets out of there. Something else, quickly. That old dude, that old dude, Mr. Stark with, I think I'm pronouncing his name so wrong. His reaction when she, he sees Tessa, that is so suspicious. Like, he had a daughter, or a granddaughter, of 15 years old, and she died, and... Maybe they are related. I'm not sure, but he was really surprised and shocked. And um, at the end, when he asks her, "Did that, did that thing, um, automatic me mechanism, hurt you? Are you okay?" And she's like, "Yeah, it's fine. Thank you for um, thinking about me and stuff." I'm like, "Who is this dude?" Um, we'll see. Okay, so in conclusion, I love this book. I think I give it four and three quarters okay, so please tell me your favorite part in it um, I would love to hear from you guys and also tell me which team you're on because I am in team wool what do you think about Cecily Harrendale what do you think she's gonna do in the next book um, how is Will, Will and Jim and Tessa's relationship gonna happen how is it gonna work what is Tessa so Please comment down below. I would love to chat to you guys about this book. If you enjoyed this video, please give this a thumbs up. Okay, see you guys next time. Love.